Welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert with a daily video update. I want to talk about the layers within layers that make up the news that we see coming out of the Middle East these days. It's very easy for us in the West to see the headlines that come from Israel, from Iraq, from Afghanistan, from Syria, Saudi Arabia, and to have a very black and white view, a perspective that's very simplified compared to the reality on the ground. And I don't pretend to be an expert about the uh, geopolitical situation in the Middle East, but in trying to educate myself, uh, it's become very obvious to me that there are many things going on there that we in the West simply do not have a firm grasp on, and that perhaps we should be a little more circumspect, a little more reserved in our opinions about what we need to do in order to fix things, if indeed things there can't, can be fixed. Uh, we look at the Bible and we see that there has been conflict in that part of the world since the time of Abraham. We're talking 5,000 years. It's not likely that a new political initiative by a newly elected leader is going to result in a final solution anytime soon. Some of the recent news events that have complicated issues in the Middle East, the death of King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia. He was uh, aged, 90 years old. He turned the kingdom over to his uh, designated successor, King Solomon. Uh, Solomon is 79 years old. He is reportedly in shaky health, he has uh, suffered a stroke, and there have been rumors in the kingdom that he's been suffering from dementia. Those rumors denied by the palace in Riyadh, of course. But not coincidentally, I think, with this development is the eruption of a new phase in an ongoing rebellion in Yemen, which is the, king, the uh, country on the southern border of the Saudi kingdom. Shiite rebels moved into the capital city of Sana'a last fall, and within the last couple of weeks have forced the government in Yemen out of power. Presumably, these Shiite militia are backed by Iran, which is Saudi Arabia's big rival in the Middle East. You see, the different sects of Islam, the Sunni, the Shia, dislike each other only slightly less than they dislike uh, the non-Muslims. And they're conflict has resulted in regional conflict throughout the Middle East. For example, what's happening in Syria is in large part a proxy war between Saudi Arabia and Iran. So what happens in Yemen on the back door of Saudi Arabia? Has Iran gained influence in Yemen? Perhaps, perhaps not. Until very recently, Yemen had been split into two countries. There was an independent South Yemen controlled by a Sunni majority. Already, the southern part of Yemen has indicated they aren't going to follow any orders coming from the Shia-dominated capital city of Sana'a. In fact, if anything, the development in Yemen may give new strength to a uh, Muslim Brotherhood, radical Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda-related uh, group. In fact, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, which is a Sunni organization. If they can somehow present themselves as defenders of the Sunni population against the Shia re uh, rebels. In Syria, we have rebel groups that have been fighting against Bashar al-Assad, the uh, dictator of Syria, with help from the West. The United States, through the CIA, has been providing training and weapons to rebels in Syria, some of whom have flipped sides and now pledge allegiance to the Islamic State. ISIS, ISIL, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that group has gained territory over the last six months, despite thousands of airstrikes launched by the United States and our coalition partners. Uh, the government of Bashar al-Assad is holding on to just a portion of the country. The rest of the country is split between various groups, Sunni, Shia, the Islamic State, which is uh, Sunni, but has been fighting other rebel groups in order to create its own caliphate. Uh, of course, that extends into Iraq, and we see issues there with the, the government of Iraq, with American help, trying to defend itself against the Sunni invaders of the Islamic State. The government of Iraq is predominantly Shia and would align itself with Iran, given the chance. Uh, this is an interesting situation because the interests of Iran, which wants a Shia-dominated government in Iraq, and the United States, which has invested a lot of time, money, and blood of our soldiers in trying to create a democratic state in Iraq, are, are somehow come together. So even though we aren't officially uh, allied with Iran, we find ourselves in a situation where our geopolitical goals are the same. The problem is that some of the weaponry that we have provided to the Iraqi army over the past several years 
as the, they have been overrun by the Islamic State, has wound up in the hands of the Islamic State. There are also some other weapons. There was a Facebook post, in fact, just within the last couple of weeks, showing a uh, Shia militia group in possession of an M1A1 Abrams tank, which was draped with a Hezbollah flag. Again, the Iraqi army abandoning their posts, abandoning our hardware, and it's winding up in the hands of militia groups and rebel groups that may turn those weapons against American soldiers. We currently have 3,000 trainers on the ground in Iraq working with the Iraqi army, um, and they're having some difficulties. Another thread that weaves through this tapestry that we try to make sense of is the uh, economic impact of the decline in oil prices. The Saudis, and it's been rumored that there was collaboration with the United States government in this, have opened the uh, taps on their uh, oil wells. The surplus of oil in the world market has dropped the price of a barrel of oil to about $45. And while it's great for us when we can fill our gas tanks for $1.75 a gallon, um, it has an economic impact here in the United States. The shale industry, uh, which was responsible for about 40% of job growth, the energy sector as a whole, responsible for about 40% of the job growth in the United States over the last five years, is taking it real hard. Um, there are places in America where oil and natural gas is being produced from shale uh, outside of the traditional areas that we associate with oil production, Oklahoma and Texas, uh, southern Illinois, western North Dakota, Kansas. Um, there are places in southern Indiana where oil production is a big part of the economy. They're not spending money on new equipment. Old wells are beginning to uh, break down and not be repaired. And so it's having an impact on the economy here in the United States. The steel industry is slowing down because new equipment is not being fabricated. Um, it, but it's also having an impact in the Middle East. The Iraqi government, to try to keep itself afloat and defend itself against the Islamic State, really budgeted on a price of $100 per barrel. They've revised those estimates down to $60 a barrel, the price currently at about $45 a barrel. Things are so bad that the American supervisors training the Iraqi military are actually having the soldiers in training shout bang, bang, because they don't have live ammunition for training. It's a multifaceted, many-layered, geopolitical mess in the Middle East. We try to make sense of it as best we can through the lens of biblical prophecy. Not an easy task. And there are no easy answers. The only easy solution is the one that will present itself when our Lord and Savior returns at the head of a heavenly host in the clouds. Until then, we'll keep watching, and we thank you for watching. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.